Good morning. Good to be with you today as we continue in our study of First and Second Kings. Uh, today we're going to begin in the 11th chapter of First Kings in a very interesting example of the life of Solomon and his uh, decline, if you will. So let's begin in the first verse. And it says, King Solomon, however. So we see that we have a hint now that King Solomon is doing something other than what God prescribed. King Solomon, however, loved many foreign women besides Pharaoh's daughter, Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites. They were from nations about which the Lord had told the Israelites, you must not intermarry with them because they will surely turn your hearts after their gods. So we see that, that Solomon has violated God's commandments. Uh, he has been told that, that he should not take other women, other nations uh, uh, to be their wife, to be his wives, but he did it anyhow. So it's kind of what part of no do you not understand? In Deuteronomy 17, 17, specifically God had warned about taking wives from other nations or taking more than one wife, as we learned earlier. Uh, it leads to adultery and, and it leads to compromise of God's standards. Nevertheless, Solomon held fast to them in love. The term held fast is like clung to, or he, he was clinging to the romantic inclinations of these women. In verse 3, he had 700 wives of royal birth and 300 concubines and his wives led him astray. So this was a, an ongoing thing. Uh, Solomon was following the traditions, the, the, the things of the foreign gods rather than the other way around. The people in captivity should have followed Solomon's dictates and should have followed Solomon's God, but they didn't. It was, it was if he thought everything was okay, that he could, could do this. Now, granted, some of this activity was based on, on political expediency. Uh, uh, as I mentioned last week, marrying Pharaoh's daughter was, was intended to protect him from the Egyptians. And so that's what he did. But these others are a more a romantic intention, a, a following. He he clung to them. And then in verse four it says, As Solomon grew old, his wives turned his heart after others' gods, and his heart was not fully devoted to the Lord his God. They, so it was not an immediate thing. It was not something that happened suddenly, but gradually over time, uh, Solomon uh, followed other gods. Now, we don't know to what extent he followed these gods. Uh, it, was, it was something that, that he followed gradually. Uh, Solomon might have thought he was okay, that that things would be all right. And if you look at the ninth chapter and the sixth verse, but if you or your sons, sons turn away from me and do not observe the commands and decrees I have given you and go off to ser serve other gods and worship them, then I will cut off Israel from the land I have given him and will reject his temple I have consecrated in my name. So this is a warning that Solomon was given 
uh, by the writer of this, uh, of this book. Uh, this was a warning that came from God. He said, don't do it. Uh, apparently Solomon didn't understand the word no. He thought he was all right. He thought he could, could do okay, but 100% devotion to God is expected and required. Less than 100% is not acceptable. Then in verse 5, it said, He followed Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and Molech, the detestable god of the Ammonites. So Solomon did evil in the eyes of the Lord. He did not follow the Lord completely, as David his father had done. Uh, so he devoted himself to these other gods. And one of the first commandment that we received in Exodus was, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. This is found in the 20th uh, chapter in verse 3. There shall have no other gods before me. So Solomon knew he was a wise king. He had been warned uh, throughout the New Testament about the practices that were not acceptable to the Lord. So Solomon did evil in the eyes of the Lord. He did not follow the Lord completely as his father David had done. Now, of course, David sinned as well with Bathsheba. Uh, he, though, repented and returned to God. Solomon did not. In verse 9, it said, The Lord became angry with Solomon because his heart had turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice. Now, it doesn't, it doesn't tell us here in this section of Scripture whether Solomon offered sacrifices to these foreign gods or whether he uh, had an asterisk uh, pole in his temple, in God's temple or in his house. But uh, these were evil gods. Uh, Molech. Uh, involved child sacrifice, and we don't know if Solomon uh, followed that practice, if he sacrificed a child to these gods, but certainly he uh, burned incense. He not only allowed it, but he supported it, and he encouraged it. And some of these gods, uh, not only were there ch child sacrifices, but there was also a, a sexual deviancy that they practiced, and they had temple prostitutes, and, and Solomon built temples for these foreign gods. And I can just imagine that as he built these gods on the temples for these gods on the hills outside of and surrounding Jerusalem, that the people of Jerusalem would look up and see these gods portrayed, and it must have been heartbreaking not only to God, but to the people of Israel. And the Lord became angry, of course, because he had appeared to him twice, and he had said, you know, here is the way I want you to, to do. And, and, and Solomon was a wise king. He knew what was right. Other kings and queens and and, and rulers had come to him seeking his advice. Solomon knew what was right, but he clung to the physical attraction of these other wives, these 700 wives and 300 concubines. Although he had forbidden Solomon to follow other gods, Solomon did not keep the Lord's command, and he didn't intentionally. He didn't follow God. He knew what was right, but he disobeyed God, and God was angry, and rightfully so. And then in verse 11, so the Lord said to Solomon, since this is your attitude, 
and you have not kept my commandments and my decrees. I will most certainly tear the kingdom away from you and give it to one of your subordinates. And of course, this occurred. Now, it's interesting to me that God did not tear the kingdom away from Solomon. He allowed by his grace for Solomon to finish his rule. And when he died, he left it to someone else, to the kingdom of Judah, the remaining kingdom that God allowed to follow in Solomon's line. Solomon didn't finish well. David did. Solomon did not. He started well and he was a good king, but then he failed and he, he went away from God. And, and so the kingdom was split into Judah and into uh, the other kingdoms. I will most certainly tear the kingdom away from you and give it to one of your, sub your subordinates. Nevertheless, for the sake of David, your father, I will not do it during your lifetime. And I wondered why that, that Solomon was not punished during his lifetime. It seems as I read this that his kingdom remained, his buildings remained, his wives and concubines remained. But at his death, it was torn away from his inheritance. It says, I will tear it out of the land of your son. And then in verse 13, yet I will not tear the whole kingdom from him, but will give him one tribe for the sake of David my servant and for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. So by God's grace and by God's promise, he allowed Solomon's line to continue, David's line to continue uh, as he had promised with the Mosaic and Davidic covenants. Solomon did not finish well. He started doing just fine, but then because of his unfaithfulness for his uh, following other gods for, from his uh, disobedience to God's uh, commands to not take on uh, other wives, uh, he disobeyed. And he accumulated chariots and horses and all of these were against God's command. So Solomon's heart turned away from God. How sad it is to see a failure of one of God's children. How sad it is when we see our brothers and sisters uh, fail to follow God's law and to be obedient to what Jesus has commanded us to do. And so I pray, brothers and sisters, that, that we will not fall away, that we would finish well and be obedient uh, to God, that when we see uh, a friend, a neighbor, a brother, a sister falling away from the commands of God, as Solomon did, that in love we will extend grace and we will encourage them and counsel them to, to return to, to following Jesus because we've got to finish well. We've got to be obedient. A partial surrender is not good enough. And I just pray that, that your life and my life will be one that finishes well. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for the word found in 1 Kings and the example that you have given us of how we should conduct our lives and what we should not do if we're going to be obedient to you. And Father, I just pray for those that are um, 
in a period of illness, in a season of financial stress, uh, uh, for marital difficulties, I just pray, Father, that you would surround them with your love and your care and your counsel. I pray for those that are hospitalized this weekend, and I just pray, Father, that your healing touch would be upon them. And I pray, Father, for our churches, that you would fill them with your love, that you would bless them uh, with your abundance. I pray, Father, for uh, a financial uh, flow to our church, that, that we would be caught up in budget. And Father, I pray that as we go out, as we see people that need you, that we would not be hesitant to say, Jesus is Lord and Savior, and he loves you. Father, all of these things I pray in the blessed name of Jesus. And all God's children said, Amen. God bless you.